Yeah, the, the first thing I'd sure like to wish everybody great safety in our state and throughout the South. I know some bad weather is uh, it's probably already hit parts of Mississippi. I was talking to a guy in Alabama, said the weather's gotten bad over there and hope everybody stays safe. All right, we were supposed to travel out tonight. Uh, we're not, we're gonna wait and go in the morning at 8.30 due to the weather. And uh, so we'll practice here today and, and go. But, um, you know, our, our team obviously had their heart set on playing in the NCAA. Uh, so proud of our guys down the stretch, really the third best record in the SEC in the second half is behind Alabama and Arkansas. Uh, great effort against LSU. It was just a tremendous college game. Uh, you know, give LSU credit down the stretch. They asked us to stay in Nashville uh, just to be under the COVID protocol and because they knew we were tight, you know, close in that bubble. You know, some things happened, some upsets, you know, that probably hurt our chances on Saturday. But we stayed in Nashville, watched the selection show. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, we, we didn't get selected. We drove back, heard the news of the NIT. So, so excited. I've been in it three or four times at different schools. Been a part of some great wins in, in the NIT. And uh, to be the first ever number one seed in the history of, of Ole Miss. And, and when you look at it, guys, Ole Miss has been playing basketball for 111 years. And uh, it's our 22nd postseason tournament. So, you know, so I'm excited for our guys. And uh, so we're going to go play a really well-coached, good Louisiana Tech team. All right, Paris, start us off. Hey, Kermit. Um... We hear a lot this time of year, uh, or moving toward the NCAA tournament, about the look test, the eye test, when teams are playing well. The, you know, I, I thought y'all looked like a tournament team m much of the time. Do you sense that uh, that much credence is given to the look test, or is it just really, really dependent on your analytics? You know, I think it just varies, Parrish, year to year. You know, I mean, I've been on there th this – this year it seemed like they were on the side of the mid-majors. And, and no offense, they all had great years. You know, I've been on that side where they didn't, you know, at Middle Tennessee. One time they did, and we got an at-large bid. Uh, so, I, you know, did we have some holes in our resume? We sure did, like everybody did, Parrish, those, you know, those 10 or 15 teams that got in and didn't get in. But we just thought that, you know, by what we did in the league and, like I said, how we're playing at the end, we felt confident, you know, and that our resume was – a pretty similar to the one the uh, the first year that we did get in as an eight seed. Uh, COVID, how are you guys set up there? I know their uh, Yolette's team, had, or, or she has has it, there's some issues in, in baseball right now. How are you guys set up? Well, knock on wood, uh, Thomas Gray is getting out of COVID. Our assistant coach, he missed the SEC term our last couple games. Uh, he'll join us tomorrow in Frisco for his first day. Uh, like I said, knock on wood, our, our other guys are – are doing fine with COVID and been under, you know, the strict, you know, protocol, and uh, we'll get we'll jump right in it in Frisco tomorrow. Go to Ben. Yeah, Carmen, you brought it up the disappointment of not making the tournament, but once that disappointment um, kind of had some time to breathe, did you just think that the players responded pretty well? And is there excitement about playing in the NIT? There are with 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 a lot of our guys. KJ Buffin has opted out of the NIT, and uh, and so. You know, but I can just say this, you know, Ben, we're just excited about I am coaching the guys that want to represent Ole Miss and look forward to playing in, in the postseason. And, and uh, you know, and so those guys that we had practice yesterday, uh, they were they were really excited and, uh, and looking forward to going. As far as KJ is concerned, is him opting out of the NIT, does that affect his future in any other way? Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at, at wanting to coach the guys and talk about the guys that – that want to be in our program, Ben. Go to Nick. Other than KJ, are you expecting to be full strength? Devontae Schuler flew out. His mother's having surgery in Vegas. And uh, so Devontae didn't practice with our team yesterday. He's with his mom. And uh, so we hope to get Devontae back uh, to Dallas to meet us. And, you know, but then what happens, you know, the pro, the COVID protocol and getting involved in it, depending on when he can can come back. And so, but, but Devontae is not with our team, he's with his mom. So we wish, you know, Ms. Linda a recovery and a, and a you know, a successful surgery. Go to Courtney. Who kind of? Oh, sorry, Nick. 
Nick, you can go ahead. Worries, Adam. Who would you need to step up to, if KJ and Devontae can't go? Who well, you, you know, Jarkel's going to have to play a lot of point. Jar- excuse me, Nick. Jarkel will have to play a lot of point. Uh, you know, Matthew Morrell and Austin Crowley, uh, you know, well, minutes will go up. Uh, I think Luis Rodriguez will need to take a, a big jump. You know, and Romello White, you know, needs to play like the best player in the tournament. And he's capable of doing that. And uh, we got some other guys, you know, as far as, uh, you know, Robert Allen, Sammy Hunter. So we'll have to have some different guys to, you know, and we, we've done that. I mean, we, we, we've had some guys that, that have stepped up and we fought some different injuries and different things uh, along the way this year. All right, Courtney, go ahead. Thanks, Coach. Obviously, this time of year, there are teams that, you know, choose not to participate in the NIT. Was that ever a consideration for your guys to not, you know, go to that postseason game after, you know, being so close to the NCAA tournament? And if that wasn't the case, then why did you think it was so important for your team to get this postseason experience? Well, you know, I just think this. We have a lot of guys that are really excited about playing. You know, I think, you know, some people, they see a lot of the football players that opted out of bowl games, you know, and uh, and, and I can understand maybe if the, the draft status is real, real, real high. Uh, but I don't know. I guess I just, you know, you get to go chance to play in a prestigious tournament on national TV uh, with your best friends, the guys on your squad. And so I know the guys in our gym today are, are excited about playing. And uh, But, you know, it, it is a disappointment. I, I've been on both sides of it. It's a disappointment when you sit there and you think, you know, your players, you think you deserve to be in and, and you don't get in and, uh, and nothing against the committee at all. And it is, it, you, it, there's a sunken feeling, you know, but then I think it takes a couple of days and, and to get guys excited about it. And so like I said, we had a real spirited practice yesterday. Go to Neil. Did you call on me, Adam? Yes, yeah, go ahead, Neil. Okay, I couldn't hear for a second. No worries. Um, Kermit, with the news about KJ in mind, and obviously there's some other guys that are leaving and guys that are going pro and that kind of thing. You've got a lot of available spots. Have you gotten involved in the transfer market at all to this point? Yeah, heavily. Uh, Neil, with high, with, with, with uh, high school guys that are still available, and uh, we want to have a great mixture always. And uh, obviously we signed the three guys early. And, uh, and sure, we've been on Zoom calls the last two or three days with guys that have entered uh, the transfer portal. There's some really good talent out there. And so I think probably like everybody else has done, you know, it's just, you know, in this day and time, you know, it's just it's going to be ever changing rosters in college basketball. And I know we're not accustomed to this much change throughout college basketball. Uh, it's going to happen. And uh, but still, you know, we feel good about like high school guys in our program that are here. You know, from Austin Crowley to, to Matthew Morrell, Luis Rodriguez, Sammy Hunter, good high school players. You know, the three high school players that we've signed early. So we're not going to abandon high school basketball at all. That's going to be a top priority. But, yeah, to get a guy like uh, Romello White to fit a perfect, you know, a need, Robert Allen, those kind of guys, yeah, we'll still be, be involved in that market, Neil. Go to Ben. Yeah, to piggyback off of that from uh, Neil Kermit, as far as the numbers you're working on or operating with, did you have a number in mind and how many could you potentially add this spring, do you think? Yeah, probably we're looking at maybe maybe three, you know, Ben. And, uh, you know, so that that's kind of the number we're looking at uh, right now. But like I said, you know, just the changing of rosters uh, throughout college basketball, college football, you know, I, I think – uh, even the teams that are in Indy right now in the bubble, as soon as their season is over, then they'll go through the same things of whether guys are going pro or whether seniors are coming back, uh, transfer. I mean, so there's, there's just going to be an influx. It's just something we're all going to have to manage uh, like we've never managed before uh, throughout the rest of you know college basketball over the next eight or ten years. We'll go back to Parrish. Kermit, obviously Romello was a good fit. Dementio may not have been. I mean, what, what goes into your evaluation and, and trying to get that upperclassman who can come in and, and, uh, and fit the chemistry right away and, and be a contributor? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, so, sometimes it doesn't matter if it's a grad transfer, a transfer, or a high school kid. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And uh, Dementio Vaughn was, was, a, was a really good teammate. 
you know, we, we hated that, that it didn't work like Dementio, and we all thought that it would. Uh, and we wish him the best of luck. But, you know, Romello White, you know, obviously I think your talent and then just, you know, he's a really good teammate. And, and COVID hurt Romello early. I mean, you know, he was one of those guys. He had a concussion that Paul's hurt us. And I think you're just starting to really see him play over the last probably seven or eight weeks how we thought he could because of that pause, you know, about that three or four week period, which at the end of the day, everybody went through a period of time, but it, it did hurt the progress of our team, you know, with three days of practice and start playing all those games. And we, we could take care of the teams we were supposed to beat. And, but I think we got in some of those higher level games and, and we just weren't ready like we needed to be. Go to Adam. Coach, looking ahead towards Louisiana Tech, what do you expect to see from them? Yeah, you know, that's, that's the league that I came from, Adam, and I have a lot of respect for Eric, the head coach. Uh, they're talented. Gosh, they play so hard. Uh, you know, they won their league uh, and just lost a heartbreaker to North Texas in the semifinals. Uh, they're very deservingly. Uh, the NIT, good guards. They. they they're one of the very best defensive teams in college basketball. They've got good depth. Uh, they, they've got really good pieces. And so I've, I've played against that team when Mike White was there and coached against Eric's teams. And Louisiana Tech just has a really good program. And so we're going to have to play at a, at a high level to win. Back to Nick. Remember, what do they do so well defensively? It just seems like they kind of put pressure on guards. They do, Nick. And it's just, it's just no frills. There's no tricks to it. I mean, they just guard. They've got they've got competitive guys that guard the ball. Uh, they do they guard around the goal. Twenty nine percent from three, under forty percent uh, from the field. They'll press some in the full court. Uh, but yeah, they just they just they just got really highly competitive guys that play extremely hard and they're well coached. Between y'all and Louisiana Tech, St. Louis, Colorado State, Memphis, it seems like a lot of defense first teams are in this tournament. Just how do you go about preparing for a tournament when so many games project to be low score? Yeah, you know, uh, and obviously the two teams, we played Mississippi State twice, and Randy Bennett, who's a great friend of mine, I worked with him at Idaho at St. Mary's. They'll play tonight. Two other, you know, Ben's teams, a good defensive team. St. Mary's has always been great defensive teams. You're right about that, Nick, and I looked at that the other day. There's a lot of really tough-minded teams, and I think that's how they got to the NIT, you know, and um, – I'm sure a lot of those guys felt the same way. I'm sure Memphis felt the same way. They were trying to get an NCAA tournament. But, you know, I just think a lot of teams that are in postseason right now, even though you're Alabama, make a bunch of threes, they were probably the best defense, one of the best top two defensive teams in our league.